Welcome to the last and final round of the USA Chess Championships, uh, which is University Sports South Africa. This game was very interesting. I just finished analyzing it, and I am shocked at the fact that I could have won this game. But I did not actually... We'll get into that later in the video. But here I played a Banco Gambit, which I hadn't played in a long while in a classical game. And uh, it was pretty interesting. So started out with d4, knight f6. You know, guys, I played the c4, g6. And then my opponent went to g3. Then I went c5. So here I can also still go d5. And then I think just bishop d2 and then c5 if I want. <laughs> this is playable. Believe it or not. But this is playable, right? I could have gone for that. But I just went c5 now. d5, b5, best move, cd, a6, ad, bishop g7, best move. He played a knight, c3, d6, best move, bishop g3, and then rook takes. Now, as you can tell here, uh, Stockfish doesn't like this move. And my idea is, in some Banco setups, right, you take with the rook here, right you put the bishop there you have knight bd7 then you put the queen on a8 now this pressure will mount on this e pawn and then after castles obviously usually white supports it with e4 and then you push e6 right and the point of e6 is to soften up this point and after takes takes because this knight also usually jumps back here to hit the pawn here so let me just show you how that might look like let me just try to sample this thing out let's say takes let's say castles i'll just give these are just random moves right this is not how the game went i'm trying to show, prove a point here uh let's say maybe a3 i don't know there maybe there okay then maybe something like knight b6 right maybe let's say just root d2 i don't know then maybe okay here i'll have to go for something like rook here i guess but then this e6 move the point here is that you really want to sometimes in some, in some of these lines if you take with the rook here you want to break with e6 and then if takes takes and this is kind of soft here yeah. in some lines you actually want to keep a rook here on f8 so that once you because you're anticipating the opening of the f file and then you hit there right it's playable but uh that's why i played this move i, I thought it was just interesting even though stockfish hates it as you can see the question mark there uh, i was just analyzing this video i mean this game just now so but it's playable like that's the thing because like remember this 1.1 advantage is the fact that white has a pawn up because this is a banco gambit right i gambit to the pawn but technically speaking this position is equal so to speak i don't know if you guys understand right because the one the what the plus one is just because of a pawn in essence you give the pawn back this position is equal in fact arguably black is better because of the lead in development and the open lines right that's the whole point of the banco the open line the rooks are coming here right so somehow somehow i did lose the thread so don't, don't think this is like not playable uh, this is actually extremely playable. Like the Banco Gambit and its its sort of essence is something also that in the long run it's been proven. And I'm saying this because it's been proven by those who study openings that it's actually playable. It's just that the engine gives this uh, plus one because it doesn't fully understand really the long term pressure that, 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 that this position has, right? Black has. So anyway, castles, bishop b7, there it is, a knight c3, knight bd7 a3 right classical prevention of let's say if now he played something like here um e4 just not here and then if that now the knight comes to e5 usually the banco knight wants to land here right and classical lines which you will see later in the in in, in, in some other games you have c4 you, you have the knight jumping into d3 you have this knight backing it up here on on uh, on, on c5 typical banco gambit style very aggressive very playable this position is 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 is, is, is very good for black uh proven time and time again in many classical games i'd, I'd advise you go look at it if you want actually there's a good book by i think it's pinsky uh yeah i think it's pinsky it's 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 the gamble it's the uh, 
the Banco Gambit revealed or something like that or the Banco Gambit I don't know but like there's a great book if you guys want to pick up the Banco which I'll, I'll advise it's, it's a very interesting opening it's always good to study Gambits that are, are no longer that popular you know you never know what you can get into there are a lot of things that you can actually learn by just playing this opening so h3 uh castled of course e4 typical style my b6 was an inaccuracy and i agree here i think i should have been quicker with like queen a5 my opinion because that's you, white needs to be quick with these queen a5s rook a moves and maybe knight e8 black i mean uh for counter play it's very very imperative that you play energetically because that's the point of the gambit you gambit a pawn to play energetically and i was not playing energetically knight b6 was a step in the wrong direction however after rookie one uh, i played queen d7 which i also felt like was a bit of a wrong step in the direction because usually you want to keep this square kind of open for this knight and you want to sort of play along these lines but i thought the knight is here maybe the queen is good for it to head that way and then he played and then i played king d7 uh queen d7 and then he played bishop f1 now here i just thought of ignoring him legit i thought of something like rook b8 and just letting him take this this rook here i thought of actually let's see because i didn't analyze that part literally here i thought of just letting him take the rook because i'll have uh, a very strong like rook f a8 okay but it's it still says white is better but it's here because it's playable like white can black can actually play this way but i quickly rejected because i was already a pawn down and i didn't really see how me going to the side is going to be fruitful right because he's kind of like on time to defend if anything to be honest so that's why i, I ended up rejecting like the rook sack somewhere or the other because i thought of it but then i was like ah because even i can take it this way knight a4 bishop takes as you can see there in the line and the knight takes there and then after b takes takes here and then now this pawn is weak and the amounting pressure that is about to fall on the white position with rook b8 maybe right that pawn over there uh knight out this way there's that like that's what could happen but uh no i don't want to play it like that i don't want to play it like that um and so i left it right so the plus one shouldn't be that concerning here because it's like i said it's mainly because of the pawn and this position is technically if you were to run like it on your on a more neural network like leader it'll tell you that uh it's kind of like equal it wouldn't evaluate it as like a plus one um plus one point three stockfish stars but anyway that that's beyond the scope of <laughs> of uh of this video we had to just analyze and not really talk about how engine works and all that so rook a8 uh queen b3 good move and he has spent like 30 minutes because i was thinking of doing something weird here and it was going to be bad i ended up rejecting it because i mean there's just nothing this is this there's just nothing right uh let's say maybe king here uh let's just say king takes i mean there's what's here really like i thought there was nothing this was a line i calculated but like i mean like seriously oh it was not so bad i thought of playing this it's equal uh, yeah but still like i gave you a freebie but then now i have to put pressure throughout the game i mean i'd have to play accurately like stockfish but i'm not stockfish so yeah but i saw this line i thought i could play like this right uh because this is bad if like for example here he takes with the rook this is this is even worse i thought just queen c6 right just going for the trade otherwise the queen is trapped uh and then takes so i thought this was better because now i'm gonna because i want to play knight g here right but there's this knight here oh this is actually a, a better variation oh turns out this is a better variation the one would check is worse yeah you see so it was not gonna work probably would have taken up the rook because i thought he would might be hesitant and take with the king because he wanted to keep the defend of this pawn here at least twice with the king and the knight i mean with the rook and the knight but it turns out this line is actually more appropriate yeah so it's good that i rejected bishop a a6 i thought like i just wanted to play this was the last round of the tournament okay i just i just wanted to have some fun look you do not play the banker gambit if you do not want to have some fun you play this because you want to have some fun okay and look i love fun i don't know about you i love fun so bishop to a6 uh i rejected it because i didn't really see much that was gonna go on there i thought of it 
but uh, quickly rejected it. So just sacking a whole beast and just the thing is because the attack can't really like if you look at this position. Uh, where is it? Uh, okay, let's say the one with uh rook takes on on f one. I want that one uh, there, right? Like where the attack really, right? Because I only have one knight that can sort of go this way and maybe that way. But like this, I can't go that way because this is got in that square. So what's the point really? Right? And if I go knight a5, if I go knight a5, just so you understand, just knight g4, right? And then queen g5, and then uh maybe king g2, and then h3 maybe. Right, trying to kick out the the knight over there. So, and then maybe knight h2, hitting the, 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 the queen there. It's it's like, what's going on? There's nothing. There's nothing. So, that's why I also rejected that line. So, I played queen d8 instead. Simple, very practical. I shouldn't have wasted 20, like 30 minutes actually, thinking about this move. It's the most practical move, to be honest. And then he went a4. And then I went bishop a6 now, well timed move, best move, a5, then I took, then he takes, then knight bd7, and I, I'm in shape, right? Don't be, like, this is not scary. a5, this is typical, like, I've dealt with these positions a whole lot when I, I used to be a junior player back in the days. And I know how to handle the a-pawn just very well, like... It's plus one point four, but like minus the material advantage of one, it's like point four. Technically, the position is equal. It's not like it's losing, but anyway, I'll stop making the case for that. Just investigate it for yourself. You will see. Uh, queen a four, queen uh, c eight was a bit of a misdirection. I think I had to play like queen c seven and then rook a b eight, but then after queen c seven, I thought knight here, then here, then there, and I think I calculated this instead i'm not quite sure i think no man i can't really remember what i calculated here but oh 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 in fact i think here after queen b b6 i think i was gonna go to b8 queen c7 i think i was gonna go to b8 i'm not quite sure but i i thought of that line i rejected it i preferred queen c8 because i also just wanted to eye this pawn that was my idea playing Queen C8. Uh, engine says it's dubious, it's an inaccuracy. But look, it's playable. Yeah, it's it's playable. That's the thing, right? These question marks and exclamation marks shouldn't really bother you. Well, they should if it's a double question mark or or one full question mark. But like, if it's dubious move, it does not mean it's inherently bad. Maybe not that good. But like, if you're playing at a club level or tournament level. Uh, it's very difficult for such things to be banished. Like, this is not super GM chess tournament where you just play one little dubious move and then you lose it. But guess what? Even they sometimes don't even convert such positions. So, yeah, look, just play chess, man. Just relax and play chess. Queen a6, again dubious. Who cares? Queen b5 was a blunder. Anyway, I took that was the best move. Knight take rook, uh, rook g, rook f b8. I mean, best move again. Right, knight c3. And now this is, and now the Benko gambit is starting to come alive, right? Back then, the engine would not see like the super far unless it was like a super cloud engine. But like, if you were to give it to a, 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 an engine that thinks more of like a human basis, because Starfish now is kind of hybrid. I think also this one just to come is a bit outdated. But like now, you begin to see the pressure that amounts here, and then you you begin to realize that uh, the Banco Camera, though, it's kind of lost its reputation among top players, but it's playable, right? This is, it's still a practical opening. So knight c8 was an inaccuracy for me. Uh, and then knight d2, knight d5, rook e3, and then knight c7. Actually, apparently, I think I was supposed to just bring back this knight and chill, but I, I already had, f4 was a good move, knight d7 uh, was the best move, knight c4 was a blunder, and then rook b4, of course. Now, he cannot come and guard his 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 knight like that. Because if rook here, right? If rook b4, bishop slashes here, and then if pawn takes, the rook falls. The rook is dead, like seriously dead. Right? I'm winning. So he'd have to take and part ways with his minor piece instead. 
and this is winning still for black it's awful so that's why at this juncture after rook b4 knight went back to d2 and then bishop d uh oh i played c4 first and the idea of this is also a classical banco idea right you want to bring the knight to c5 like i described earlier and then to d3 maybe even b3 because like this bishop is out of the game like i gave you a pawn but you have a bishop that's out of the game what do you have to show for it right that's like this thing about the, uh, that i love about the banquet that i feel like it's so romantic when it comes to chess because it's that type of a game where you gamble a pawn and you play so energetically and it's just fascinating how black can still make hate like basically make chaos on the board even being a pawn down and get it later because usually that's how it is it's like you give a pawn advantage to get the tempo back right from white because white goes first you need to understand that white goes first and so because of that he always has an edge but if you give him pawns and you develop the pieces rapidly like you do in the in the bank gambit you are taking the tempo back as black but then you are, you are conceding material in the process but it's just a pawn and you can play that right so you need to understand that it's very important actually aspect that you need to understand in chess that's why gms you find them sacrifice or any other good chess player for that matter will sacrifice a pawn for activity or this for that because sometimes for a price of a pawn it's all worth it it's all worth it. Anyway, rook a3, and then here, bishop d4, and then bishop d2, and then I played knight c5, which is a bad move. Now, the engine here wanted me to actually just go, which I thought, uh, just bishop c5 and chill. But I, I, I was hell-bent on playing on sort of like the strategic, on towing like uh, the strategic line, so to speak, or the strategic principles of the Banco Gambit, right? Plop the knight to d3, right? Just suffocate him here, hold this position. This pawn is not going anywhere, really. That, like, that was, my, that was my thought process. So these moves, to me, I was playing almost immediately. They were just coming naturally, even when I played c4 earlier on. It was just natural, because I've studied the Banco Gambit, right? You guys should get the book uh i'll probably leave a link to it down in the description now that i've come to think of it uh and then you played 9f3 which was a blunder uh, which was a blunder and it sets the game to zero zeros and yeah i played the best move bishop chops on c3 now there are many lines here that i can go through and analyze but uh i just want to keep this recap short because uh he can't really take with the rook because if he takes with the rook i just get my a4 pawn back and then this pressure here will but let me just show you just takes takes and this is really un it's this is difficult to manage rook is gonna jump to b5 i mean knight is gonna jump to b5 right at some point i might even just and then that knight is gonna jump to b3 or d3 i'm just gonna suffocate white that's the idea so uh this is a well-timed move bishop c3 great move and then b takes on c3 by the way i'm gonna put down this whole game right but now black is in the driver's seat rook b1 best move bishop d4 was a blunder uh i missed the win here and i also it's important for me to mention also at this juncture i was actually living on the increment as always which i said it's a weakness of mine as a chess player which i have to fix um this is an inaccuracy because now i because i was scared of bishop uh b6 right but there was nothing to be scared about here just chop so this is the line it takes bishop here it hits that it hits this now i cannot take because just takes and it hits the the knight again it hits the knight again and then if takes and then the pawn just takes knight then I, I can't even stop the pawn right it's gonna promote here and my knight is still hanging so after this though there's this incredible move knight b5 hits the rook over there right and then hits this pawn this was a missed win from me literally this is winning so if like rook a5 are taking the pawn i can snag this okay you can't do that because it's going to be a fork right it's going to be a fork so you actually have to go for uh in fact the, 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 <laughs> the rook is lost either way because if here same thing i messed with this win and it's insane because i remember now in the game i actually calculated something similar to this but because of time pressure it kind of sneaked out of my mind this this is insane this is insane so i could this game i drew the game well i spoiled the result now for you but i mean this 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 is like a classical example of what a banco gambit is capable of doing when in the right hands not my hands of course but i mean i'm a i'm a fairly capable player okay uh, i'll 
take it. I'll take it. When it's in the in the hands of a player who understands sort of the strategic treatment of the positions and navigating such positions. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was this. And I mean, come on, man. I, I was excited. Like I was stoked on so so many levels, right? So this but this was gonna be winning, but I missed this. But still the game the game the the, the game was still young. So after bishop b3, I played knight b3 instead, which was a missed win from me, basically, instead of going for knight takes. But uh uh weep not for road and travel. They played knight bd2, I played rook uh d2, uh b2, I mean, um just sort of he cannot now just cobble up here because then that's hanging. So he takes this time to play king f3 to guard the rook over there. And then I play knight b5, which is a blunder, but it's an okay move. Still not losing. And then knight takes is a great move. Knight a3 takes, rook b2, knight takes, that takes, 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 takes. And yeah, like this endgame I can hold, even if it says plus... 2.5 for white. I don't know how white really wins this. Uh, I actually have to sit more than and and, and, and try to study this end game. But they gave me a check. King g7. King uh, king f8. Check again. I went there. I played rook b3. I immediately pushed f5. Right. This is also coming because the fact that I understand these positions. You wanna disintegrate this uh structure here because the rook is already seeing a d5 so f5 is such a great strategic strike in the center right it's so because if takes you first gobble up this pawn right and then if it takes then just pawn takes and like the position is going to hold like it's going to be so good in fact i think you, you can even just take back uh as black right and this point is going to be an, a, a huge liability because after just taking the king now can do all sorts of marches i don't know but f5 was a brilliant move well good move c5 rook a4 uh because now if he plays king here i was just threatening to take check basically that was the idea uh, i think rook c5 was also fine or just rook a1 which i played later on in the game because you got to keep the rook active maybe just rook a1 yeah but he played um after rook a4 my opponent played rook b3 then i chopped down which was also a great move so now i'm equalizing right so it's not always about like stuff like like in this position right the engine says this is plus two point something but if your opponent doesn't know how to navigate the end game which by the way i'm very familiar with the banco end game and i've studied it well i would i'd say enough and you can see by the play and how easy the moves come to me rook a1 right you gotta keep the rook active now the rook is gonna be at the back giving checks and so forth because now i was just playing for a draw because i missed my chance to win anyway so frustrating right so king there rook check rook there rook back rook there rook check king there f h5 right and as you can see the evil bar is like okay black is making progress because now i'm going to improve my position with every other move rook king f6 rook there that doesn't scare anybody rook c4 absolutely dead equal check go come down don't go up because it's not too late to say oh no i'm gonna play up and then you just hang a piece right and then maybe expect i think this is still okay yeah it's it's, it's completely winning because i thought check and then if they just go yeah but then this is too soft and it's difficult to guard because i think white just goes here yeah and like oh but it's still equal so it's still playable but um yeah i didn't want to go for complicated lines just king f7 i'm a very practical player okay just practical simple chess nothing fancy rook check rook check and just draw agreed and it is a dead draw because even if for example here i venture down this way there's nothing right rook h4 just h5 i mean rook h uh h2 just h4 then i come back like the position hasn't really changed much nothing is gonna happen i cannot touch these pawns neither can he come forward this is a classical stalemate position right there's no one can make progress and so here we agreed to a draw and here he was down on four minutes i think about four minutes something i was still living on the increment but now because i was playing many of these moves in the end game so fast because it was natural to me i think i was about like two minutes up now on the clock and i can live on that i mean i've i've survived games living on the increment 
game with like two seconds and then play and then 30 seconds more you know so yeah this is an interesting and i think to be honest this was the this is a very instructive banco gambit game uh my best moves i've played all the while but uh it just shows the spirit of the opening and how it is if you played right and you understand it right this is what you get sometimes even the dubious openings are good especially in the hands of players that can treat them right right uh because sometimes it's not even about the players who can treat it right it's like when chigorian first played the chigorian defense and then people thought it was, he was stupid for playing 96 and uh tarash made remarks like uh it was his brilliant moves that saved him, but that was not sound. But the truth is, the Chigorin defense is a reputable opening, and anyone can play it. And any, most chess openings, by the way, are, right? It's, it's about understanding the opening than your opponent, if you're lucky, of course. If they know it well, and maybe they are a GM, I don't know, and able to put too much pressure, then you probably lose. But, like, at a level before, like, below 2,000, master level, I'd say play this opening. It's very practical. It's nice. It's amazing. I hadn't played the Banco game in years. And I just detonated, like, last round of the tournament. I was feeling goofy. And I just went for it. And it was a it was a beautiful game. I think, overall, I scored, like, um, 86 point something percent. And this was Stockfish at a depth of 30. My opponent scored, like, 87.7. But, like, this is still equal. Like, 1.7 is not... 1.6, 1, 1, 1. not much of a difference. Uh, so it was a good game. It was a good game. Uh, and of course the graph where it says plus one, this is mainly because of just a pawn advantage, really. Uh, nothing much there. So very interesting game. Very, very interesting game. And he played like four blunders, which is interesting. Sorry about that. I had like zero, but I had four mistakes, seven inaccuracies. So this is the thing about playing something like the Benko. You gotta be accurate. Okay. Cause you gotta put pressure and sustain that pressure for a long time and ensure you're playing great moves but that's the thing about playing a gambit it teaches you how to put pressure so that's how it trains your chest so pick up a gambit man okay play main lines but pick up a gambit or something make your chest spicy anyway thanks for hanging around uh that was a bit of a rant um i'll see you in the next ones kings and queens this concludes the tournament uh and uh standings wise i finished 54th with five and a half out of nine terrible performance it was a very tough tournament but it was my first tournament in many years i'll take it i had a blast and yeah that's pretty much it until next time have a good one cheers